Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings, everybody. I'm going to be doing a podcast that would fit into the sciences playlist and also my foundations for wellness. It'll be on an article called Building Resilience at Any Age. Now, right off the bat, I'd like to give credit to the person who wrote the article, but in this case, I couldn't find it. This is posted on the American Psychiatric Association uh, blog. I will put the link in the description when this is posted. And I can't give the name because when I read something directly from an article or, you know, a, a website, I like to give the reference of whose words I'm using. All I could find was the references from Adriana Fetter at the Biology of Human Resilience Opportunities for Enhanced Resilience Across the Lifespan. Cohen H. What is Resilience? Uh, Building Your Resilience Brain and Behavior Research Foundation. These will be in the link if you want to look. But this was something that caught my attention and it fit nicely into two playlists. I think it's important to talk about and a stepping board for people to go and be inquisitive and look into things. Again, I wish I can give credit, but I can't. But I'll start with the beginning paragraph. And every once in a while, I might interject a little bit of my thoughts. And that's how I usually do these things. So resilience is the ability to adapt well to stress, trauma, tragedy, or threats, to bounce back from difficult experiences and to overcome adversity. Resilience is a complex and active process, influenced both by genetics and environment with the potential to change over time. It is also clearly a useful and desirable quality as people across the globe cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, this will surely date this article. <laughs> Everyone has resilience, but some people cope more efficiently and bounce back more quickly from adversity and our resilience changes as we age. Many years of research have identified a range of risk and protective factors in the face of stress and trauma. More recently, research is providing a better understanding of the biology underlining these factors such as stress response systems, neural circuitry function, and immune responses in interaction with genetic factors. A recent review of research led by Adriana Feder, MD of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, looks at protective factors and promising interventions to boost resilience at various life st stages. Now, I also recommend looking into the developmental stages of children and adults. So you can look into the cognitive development and it'll give you a better handle on knowing if you're having a child or you have a, a parent, some impairments that it might have or even how to communicate better and there are stages in general. There are always outliers, but you can look into that, to the de cognitive development uh, you know, through the ages and how people respond to information and learn. So I'll get back to the article now. For example, a brief intervention of families incorporating problem solving, social support, and meaning making, parentheses, the process of making sense of life events, was found to improve children's social interactions and decrease distress in both parents and children. Childhood is a critical period for developing a strong stress response system, a solid bond with a caregiver, a supportive environment and family stability are key in promoting resilience in children. Although adolescence is a time of transition and growing independence, family support is still important. The researchers note, along with school and community support, an adolescent school and community-based interventions that focus on positive peer relationships, positive social behaviors have shown promising results. Among the protective factors for resilience in adults are generally optimistic personality, engaging in active coping, planning, and taking steps to meet challenges, 
social support, family, friends, community, and a sense of purpose. Interventions that increase a person's sense of control and build coping skills have been found helpful. Good communication skills and problem-solving skills, which can be improved through counseling, are also important for resilience. This is another factor why people should treat mental health a little more seriously. You know, uh, think of it like people should treat, uh, when you break up with somebody, you should treat that more seriously. Just trying to give you an analogy, like you know, treat it as a, an event that needs to be worked through. Like if you're working your body out, you know, constant work. Although there is less research on resilience among older adults, one study looked at the effects of group intervention program. Raise your resilience, incorporating engagement in activities and gratitude. After implementing the program with older adults in a senior housing setting, the study found improvements in stress, wisdom, and resilience. Feder, or Feder, and colleagues found a body of knowledge is gradually accumulating on the biological basis of resilience across the lifespan that is supporting development of innovative interventions to help build resilience. One example is a computer-based approach, attention bias modification, to help prevent post-traumatic stress disorder. Attention bias modification training is repeated training to help a person attend to a specific target and ignore others. Quotations. It is becoming clear that resilience involves active and unique biological processes that buffer the organism against the impact of stress. End quotes. Feder and colleagues conclude. A better understanding of the systems will help lead to better interventions to strengthen and build resilience. Now, this caught my attention immediately, this article, and I love it for what it is. And the, I think they, for short, they call it the APA, the American Psychiatric Association. We'll put awesome blogs like this for people who, like me, have been into psychiatry and neurology and human behavior for decades. But I implore people to look into what resilience is, look into building resilience. Like I said, you could look into also the cognitive development of uh, humans in general. And again, I'll say there are outliers. People are different. We have genetic and environmental factors, way too numerous. But in general, you can understand the development of a baby to three years old, from three years old to seven, from seven to 12, and so on and so forth. And learning about resilience, I think, is important. One of my uh, things I would love to see happen is people teaching breathing and meditative exercises for it to be like a mainstream thing. I go over it with my foundations for wellness, the construct, but there's lots of methods for people to explore. Learn about these topics. Something hits you, oh, resilience, oh, that, you know, something I'm interested in. How can I, um, you know, modify it. How can I build it? That is up to you. For the most part, if I get lots of response, obviously I would do deeper dives and get into bigger discussions. But I hope just bringing articles like this up, reading them, if they fall into the sciences or the foundations for wellness, that they'll help in some way spark an interest. Learning how to breathe, meditate, become introspective, face some truths possibly, but it will build resilience. And you can teach that to children and younger kids, teenagers, and even adults. It's not, some people are raised in a certain way. Some people get through life till they hit their mid thirties and they, there's something that's traumatic. All these factors come into how resilient you are and I think we can help each other, especially the friends that we know go through hard times. And just under getting a general idea of, you know, how to help somebody through it. So it could be that you're looking into it for yourself or, you know, how to help a friend. I hope this was helpful to some people. I look forward to doing more. 
Hope everybody takes care, stay safe, and don't forget to breathe.